Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. What's going on guys? This is Rob and the Loki trailer just dropped yesterday out of nowhere, <laughs> which is a really nice birthday gift. I really enjoyed it. Uh, but they also paid a little more or gave us a little more information about the time variance authority. And so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to make you an expert on the time variance authority in under 30 minutes, as I always do here on Comics Explained. And I think what you guys are going to find is the multiverse is a lot more interesting than it originally seems, right? So uh, a lot of you guys, I imagine, are probably coming here from like the Marvel Cinematic Universe films, right? You're watching Falcon and the Winter Soldier, or you've seen WandaVision, or you've seen Doctor Strange. And on the surface, especially if you see Doctor Strange, the multiverse looks simple, right? Like if you're looking at Avengers Endgame or something like that, and you have the Ancient One talking to the Incredible Hulk and saying like, you know, if you don't put the stones back at the proper time, everything could go awry. And and it's, it's easy to look at the multiverse and just say, okay, like it's a collection of universes. That is not true. <laughs> that is not true by any standard of measurement. There are all kinds of moving parts and all kinds of groups and organizations that exist out there to safeguard the multiverse. So to kind of break these things down, right? Let's start with like the Living Tribunal, for example. The Living Tribunal was created by the one above all as a means to essentially safeguard the multiverse, right? To make sure that mystical balance is maintained. Now, when the Living Tribunal was originally introduced, it was just magical energy, right? Because he was originally a Dr. Strange character. As time progressed in Marvel Comics and you saw the Living Tribunal becoming more and more involved, it was really more to just maintain the natural order of the universe, whatever that happened to be. He kind of became a plot device, more or less, and that's what you'll find with a lot of these things. But then you started seeing the introduction of like Merlin and the Captain Britain Corps. So Merlin is like this wildly magical being who created the Captain Britain Corps for the purpose of safeguarding every universe against whatever threats may emerge. The reality is that the Captain Britain Corps is, is really, really weak. Um, They're not really that powerful. You would need lots of them in order to safeguard a particular universe. So one Captain Britain kind of sucks in comparison to pretty much almost any major threat out there. You know, for example, Captain Britain could probably not defeat the Incredible Hulk. And that's just a really strong guy on Earth. Imagine like the Molecule Man Owen Reese who could alter reality on a multiversal scale. <laughs> You know, so from there you go into what's called like the Omniversal Development Court. And that is a group that's led by a woman named Saturnine or Saturnine, if you want to pronounce it that way. She's what's called the Omniversal Matrix. So she leads the group and their whole role is to make sure that like mutants across the multiverse that like in every, on every earth and every universe, mutants gain their powers at around the same time that every universe has its own version of the Avengers, that universes develop the way that they're supposed to. And if a universe does not, they initiate something called the push. And that's what happened in Earth 238 when they didn't realize that Jim Jaspers had killed all the superheroes on Earth. And then when they initiated the push, he took it as a threat and then altered reality and basically twisted the universe to such a degree that they had to destroy it. Then you go into groups like the Exiles, right? The Exiles are just kind of a collection of uh, different characters from alternate realities who just sort of travel from one universe to the next, facing off against various threats. You have Adam Brashear's Ultimate Avengers, so like a multiversal Avengers team. So that's like uh, the Blue Marvel, it's uh, Carol Danvers, it's Black Panther, um, Monica Rambeau, uh, America Chavez, people like that. It's a really cool team, right? It's a really, really cool concept. And then you have the Time Variance Authority. So the Time Variance Authority originally appeared back in Thor issue number 372 in 1986 and was created by Walt Simonson. But the, the idea of the Time Variance Authority as it was originally given to us was not fully fleshed out. Instead, what you had here was a guy by the name of Justice Peace. And Justice Peace was a guy from an alternate reality where Earth was basically a giant mega city called Brooklynopolis. And the whole idea behind this is is that World War VII had essentially begun when the last holdouts, which were a, a kind of a bridge between the Panama Canal and Patagonia, when that whole process was disrupted due to attack by a villain by the name of Zaniac. And so because the representative there had been killed, it was considered an act of war and the missiles were flying and everything was popping off. And so Justice Peace ended up getting permission from the Time Variance Authority to travel back into the past, into the main Marvel Universe, and then to basically destroy Zaniac, which with the help of Thor, he was able to do. Of course, there was a bit of a skirmish between the two at first because <laughs> they didn't fully trust each other. Um, but then following that, you know, we, we kind of got a little more involvement from the Time Variance Authority in different stories. For example, if you go and you look at Avengers Annual, you find out that the Time Variance Authority had kind of created robots that were designed to sort of help them maintain the timelines. And ultimately, the robots just kind of went awry, right? And things just kind of popped off from there. Uh, and then, of course, you had like Power Man and Iron Fist, which is kind of a continuation to a degree, not directly, but kind of a loose continuation of Avengers Annual number 22. Um, and then 
you kind of go into the Fantastic Four era. And the Fantastic Four era is really where you learn the most about the Time Variance Authority in terms of their full form and function, how they work, all that kind of stuff. We never really get an origin for them. It's just kind of one of those things where they just popped up one day and they're just, they just kind of exist to protect the timelines. And that's essentially it. Now, the funny thing about this is that with Walt Simonson being the one to create the TVA in Thor, it made perfect sense that as the person who was writing Fantastic Four at the time, he would continue that theme going. And so with Fantastic Four issues 338 through 345 going into Fantastic Four annual number 24, that what you got was this story involving something called a time bubble. And the time bubble had been referenced in Thor 372, but this is when we actually saw the, the full totality of what was going on alongside the idea that the Time Variance Authority would actually contract out. In this instance, it was a guy by the name of Death's Head. Now the, the, the time bubble as it was given to us in Thor 372 was simply just kind of established as a mistake that was made by the TVA, but we didn't really know the details of it. Instead, what we get in Fantastic Four over the course of these stories is this idea that somewhere along the line, Galactus had basically been defeated, right? Galactus was believed to have been killed. And what you got was what was called the Black Celestial, which resurrected Galactus and then exacerbated his hunger. And so what ended up happening is Galactus kind of took off to a point in the universe and then created a black hole in order to kind of pull all matter towards him and then consume that matter. So he was just basically super lazy is really all it was. <laughs> Instead of traveling around from world to world like he normally does, he just pulled everything to him by creating this black hole. Now the TVA investigated it and actually ended up exacerbating it. And so what ended up happening is they kind of quarantined this area off. And the 15 year time bubble basically meant that within this sphere, time was basically stopped, right? I mean, it, I guess it kind of continued on in its own way. And so if you decided to time travel and you ended up back or, or kind of running into that bubble, you could potentially get trapped. But according to the TVA, once they kind of walled it off, you would just sort of run into a roadblock, right? And it'd be super hard to get past it. And so the Fantastic Four alongside Iron Man 2020 and a couple other characters from different realities ended up investigating the time bubble. And when they did, they realized this alternate reality version of Galactus was inside of it. And so what Reed Richards did is he brought in something called the Ultimate Nullifier. Now, for those of you guys who aren't familiar with this, the Ultimate Nullifier is a very old artifact in Marvel Comics. And in fact, it originally showed up in the old Galactus trilogy by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. But this is a device that its its power is relative to the person who wields it. If you have the Ultimate Nullifier in your possession, but you're not super intelligent and you don't have a very, very strong constitution, then you might be able to do something like destroy a car. But if you're somebody like Reed Richards, who's highly intelligent and has a very high amount of constitution, you can use the Ultimate Nullifier to its full potential, which is to basically erase something from existence. And when I say erase it from existence, it's basically as if it never existed in the first place, right? So if I use the Ultimate Nullifier on you, then not only would you cease to exist, nobody would remember you. None of the teachers would have ever encountered you, right? It's as if you just never existed in the first place. And so the Ultimate Nullifier is a pretty serious weapon that's only used in the most extreme situations. But because the time bubble was one of these things where it would eventually become a threat to the multiverse itself, Reed Richards used the Ultimate Nullifier on that reality's version of Galactus and wiped him from existence. This goes directly into Fantastic Four issues 352, running all the way up to 354, which basically had the Fantastic Four brought before the Time Variance Authority to kind of explain themselves. And this is when you end up kind of finding out the nature of the TVA, right? The, the more detailed uh, role that the TVA plays and exactly how it is that they function. So I think we'll find this to be a lot easier to digest <laughs> if we kind of compare it to what's going on in the Loki show, at least what we've seen, right? So at the very top of the company, because the Time Variance Authority treats itself more like a corporation than anything else, you have a guy named Mr. Alternity. And you don't really see a whole lot of this guy. In fact, I think the only real time we've ever seen, uh, ever seen him was in Fantastic Four Annual number 27 and Marvel Knights Volume 4 issue number 18, right? So this guy's kind of at the top of the chain, right? He's like the boss, the CEO, the whole nine yards. Under him, you have Mobius M. Mobius. This is the guy Owen Wilson plays in the Loki TV show. But this guy is the second in command and kind of a funny thing, the way it played out in Fantastic Four uh, 352 and 353 is that you actually had this explanation that was given to them by Mobius M. Mobius in terms of how the TVA works. That was actually, well, really the only reason it was given was because of Sharon Ventura. Uh, Sharon Ventura was a woman who got her powers from the power broker, right? She went by the name Miss Marvel for a little while. So kind of a fun little way to tie into Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I don't think you'll see Sharon Ventura in uh, in Loki. It'd be kind of cool if you did, but she was more or less a character that kind of was rolled into the Fantastic Four and then eventually became a spy for Doctor Doom against the Fantastic Four. So uh, there's there's a little too much history there to really invoke her, but you might see her there. She's, she's kind of interesting. But the way this whole explanation is given by Mobius and Mobius is that the time variance of authority exists for the purpose of monitoring and safeguarding timelines. Now, I mean, the reality is because stories 
against like Age of Ultron, Days of Future Past, you know, the Michael Korvac saga, because stuff like that exists, they suck at their jobs. <laughs> but the, the Time Variance Authority exists in a realm outside of the multiverse, right? Kind of like their own little dimensional space that's there. And one of the things that's first established, one of the first things that we're told is they do have their own time cops. Now, one thing to understand is that the, the TVA having its own police force is not a catch-all, right? It's not an end-all. I mean, the, the various forces that exist out there with enough power to influence or even create new timelines are wide and varying, right? The Exile superhero team, the Beyonder, the Molecule Man, Owen Reese, the Beyonders themselves, the Marquis of Death, Matthew Malloy. You've got various people out there, even the Scarlet Witch, right? You've got various people out there that are capable of altering realities in that way. Uh, and so because of the amount of power they possess, almost none of these cops would be able to stand against them. These cops that exist here are really, they really exist more for the purpose of tracking down individuals who are manipulating time through things like technological means, right? So they, they invented some kind of a time travel device and they're bouncing back and forth through time, which kind of brings us into the next aspect of the Time Variance Authority, which is to say the nature of the multiverse is such that new timelines are created in only really a couple different ways as a Time Variance Authority is concerned. The first is through natural means, which is to say if you have a circumstance whereby you have Frank Castle, and most of you guys know the Punisher's family was killed in Central Park in a mob shooting that went wrong. A natural alteration of that timeline would be that the shooting never happened. Nobody intervened. Nobody stepped in. It's not like Frank Castle came from the future into the past and stopped the mobsters. It's simply that one of them said, okay, like we're not going to do it here because there's uh, too many people. We'll do this hit somewhere else, right? That's a natural occurrence. There is an alternate reality where that actually happened. So that's a natural formation of an alternate timeline. Then there is an artificial adjustment to the timeline. So if we use, for example, the days of future past, right? That in the main Marvel universe, the way that timeline was supposed to unfold is that Mystique and her Brotherhood of Evil Mutants assassinated Senator Robert Kelly, Moira McTaggart, and Professor X of the X-Men. That led to the human population and the government jumpstarting the Sentinel program and then the Sentinels becoming autonomous and then conquering North America. And then you had Rachel Summers, who was the daughter of Jean Grey and Cyclops in that reality that sent the mind of Kitty Pride into the past to stop Days of Future Past from happening, which she successfully did. That's an artificial alteration of the timeline. And so because those different alterations exist, especially those that exist artificially, the Time Variance Authority doesn't really care about the natural adjustments to the timeline because there really isn't a whole lot they can do about that. I mean, I guess they could, but because it falls in the natural process of things, there isn't really a reason for them to act. In terms of artificial adjustments to the timeline, somebody going back in time and keeping something from happening, that's when the Time Variance Authority gets involved. And what they'll do is they'll look at that alteration and they'll look at not just what happened, but the effects of what will happen, right? So if you ended up sending some Marvel character into the past to stop an event from happening, then the Time Variance Authority would look at the immediate aftermath of that event, as well as the effect it'll have on the entire timeline. And if it looks like it'll have a negative effect, or if they choose to act because the story requires them to, then they'll step in. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean they'll send in their time cops. They will, depending on the nature of the threat. But if it's too extreme, they'll just they'll just get rid of the timeline, right? They'll just go back and go back at some point in time and stop that event from happening or wipe that person from existence. They'll snatch them up. They'll bring them to the Time Variance Authority headquarters. They'll put them on trial and they'll say, this is what you've done. This is the alteration it'll have to the timeline. Uh, so there's only a couple things that you can do, right? Either you can go back and you can just keep yourself from doing this. You can stop yourself from committing that act. But if that person proves to be incorrigible and they're just like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do this as, as many times as I possibly can, then the Time Variance Authority will destroy them and they'll destroy their universe. Now, when a universe is destroyed by the Time Variance Authority and explicitly when it's destroyed by the Time Variance Authority, it goes to their headquarters and then any refuse that's left over will basically be dropped into what's called the nothingness beyond, which is essentially just kind of this infinite expand of emptiness, right? So think of like a trash can that goes on forever. Now, the reason why I say when the TVA destroys a universe explicitly is because there are places out there that when universes naturally end, they just kind of gravitate there. They just sort of go to that place. Marvel depicts this in different ways, depending on different circumstances. So again, not an absolute thing, but whenever the TVA wipes out a universe, they bring it here, they kind of drop it off and, and dump it into this, you know, infinitely expanding trash can. Now, the, the next aspect of the Time Variance Authority is what's called the Chrono Monitors. And these are the guys who figure out that something's going on that shouldn't be happening. And so if you look at like the Loki TV series, for, for example, right? The idea that when everything popped off during Avengers Endgame and Loki snatched up the Tesseract and disappeared, that immediately changes the timeline. And because it changes the timeline, the Chrono Monitor for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because there's only one for each universe, the Chrono Monitor would see that and then immediately report it to his superiors. And his superiors would analyze the timeline and say, okay, what impact is this going to have? And then if the impact is is just minor and it's not going to have 
any real influence at all, they might let it slide. But if it's going to have a big impact, they'll snatch up Loki, like what you saw in the, or what you're seeing in the Loki TV show. They'll bring him to the Time Variance Authority. They'll put him on trial and then they'll do whatever they need to do, whether it's wiping out the universe, simply just wiping Loki from existence or having him make amends in some form or fashion. The exact same thing happens in the comics, right? So um, the crazy thing about this is that when it comes to the alteration or the creation of new timelines, the chrono monitors can actually do that as well, right? So uh, if the chrono monitors are watching an event unfold and they say, okay, like this event is of significance that we're going to create or allow a new timeline to be created. So an example where Peter Parker chooses not to give up the Venom symbiote and he basically goes forward as Venom, then they would look at that and they would say, okay, this is not supposed to happen in the main timeline, but it is a significant enough event that we're going to allow it to play out. And then from there, it would just go forward. In a lot of ways, the chrono monitors are designed to represent writers in Marvel Comics, right? The, the writing or the editing team in Marvel Comics. Now, again, because of the fact that the Time Variance Authority is a plot device, you usually just kind of see them bouncing around Marvel Comics in a couple different ways, right? They just kind of appear in a story here or they appear in a story there. And there's not a whole lot doing, you know, for example, like they've they've appeared in the Deathlock solo series. They appeared in some what if stories. They appeared in Avengers Forever. So when you had a whole bunch of Avengers showing up in just different timelines all in the same place, uh, when you go and you look at something like Unlimited Access, right? Access basically being a character that came out of the Marvel versus DC crossover way back in the 1990s, you just kind of see them showing up at different points in time. But probably one of the more significant moments with regards to the Time Variance Authority came with She-Hulk Volume 2, issue number three back in 2005. Now, I don't mean to say that it's a significant moment insofar as, I guess, a universal reboot or anything like that. Again, the Time Variance Authority was never meant to be taken seriously. They're constantly tied up in bureaucracy and, and they're exceedingly ineffective at their jobs. <laughs> but the reason why this was kind of significant here is because what had happened is that in the aftermath of House of M and really Avengers Disassembled, when Hawkeye had basically died sacrificing his life to try to stop the Scarlet Witch, that uh, She-Hulk had tried to slip him a note and then tell him about what his future was, right? When she had met him in the past, she tried to tell him like, you're going to die or, or you're going to end up sacrificing your life, basically perishing during the events of Avengers Disassembled. Here's a way to try to get around that and it violated the timeline. The natural order of the timeline is that he was supposed to die in Avengers Disassembled. And so she was snatched up by the Time Variance Authority and then brought to their headquarters and put on trial. But you end up seeing them holding all different kinds of characters here, right? Iron Man 2020, the two gun kid. It's pretty cool. It's a, it's a pretty cool and, and interesting little thing. And that's kind of the nature of the prison that when there's a person who violates the time stream and then they're in turn found guilty by the time variance authority, they're usually just held in some kind of a, a, a temporal cell and kept there sometimes for all time until the end of the universe, uh, sometimes for a period of a, you know, for a number of years. And then they're re-educated as to why they should not manipulate the time stream. And then they're repatriated back to their own universe. But one of the funny things is while you did have justice peace, you also had justice love and like she hulk gets read the riot act by justice love <laughs> you know she's like sure you have villains like kane the conqueror that like jump back and forth through time but you guys are way worse than them because you guys have inducted members from the future you've inducted members from the past you've gone into the past you've killed people in the past like you started the destiny wars which was basically a team of avengers from across like from across the entire timeline that were traveling through time and you had multiple avengers from different timelines all operating at the same time like you guys have done nothing but just manipulate and screw up time over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of hatred for the Avengers on behalf of the Time Variance Authority. But again, you know, ultimately She-Hulk uh, she kind of argues her case and then is essentially allowed to go. But uh, but again, you know, the, the reality and, and how you're going to see the Time Variance Authority depicted in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is pretty much exactly the way they are in the comics. That they're ineffective, right? They're tied up in bureaucracy. They don't really do their jobs very well. And uh, they, they, you know, they suck. <laughs> you know, they're, they're more of like comedic relief. Like you're not going to walk away taking them seriously. But they are a cool concept to involve. My question is, how are they going to invoke and, and probably wrap in the Time Variance Authority with things like the Omniversal Development Court, potentially the Exiles? The cool thing about dealing with a team like that in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is that you may just kind of see an appearance, a cameo by somebody who exists out there, right? So like if you see Blink who appears in the Loki TV series, that means a few different things. One, it means mutants now exist in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because she's a mutant that can teleport. And two, the Exiles exist, which basically means a superhero, like a 
multiversal superhero team largely composed of mutants that exist to protect the multiverse. So you might see all kinds of stuff. If ever there were a time to give us a cameo of mutants or the X-Men or, or the, the Fantastic Four, that would be it, right? That would be it. At the very least to like reference them or something along those lines. Whether the Marvel Cinematic Universe will or not, I have no idea. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace.